This is from a stack of poems called uh, That Which Is Suddenly Precious. That's a poem in memory of, of my father. It was a memory of anybody who's ever seen a loved one slowly disappear into the strange world of Alzheimer's and dementia. And my father was from Wexford Town. As a boy, he used to have to go out and uh, on a Friday evening and get a bo good book for his father. He would knock on doors and actually uh, ask for a good book and to make sure it was good and bring it back. And then he had to walk uh, to the, the train station and get the observer that was sent down from uh, Dublin, especially for my grandfather. I visited my father when he was 90 and he said, Last night I had a dream. I was walking around Wexford as a boy and I couldn't find a good book for my father. And soon, the more and more I visited him, the more he'd gone back to the streets of Wexford town and the more reality has slipped away and he was back to being that child again. And this is about the journey he went on and so many people go on and it's called While We Sleep. While we sleep, they are slipping beyond our reach. Our elderly parents, frail aunts, grandfathers. They are dressing themselves, opening doors in the night, venturing out in search of the first home they possessed padding across motorway intersections and slippers in the dark, shuffling past shopping centres, holes of lit up office blocks. We may be scared, but they know where they are voyaging, amid their endless confusion as to whether it is night or day, amid the terror they feel as they sense their brains capsizing. They are walking back towards the reassurance of false memory, the bedrock which for decades got obscured by pressing concerns, Preoccupied with the business of surviving, the business of life. But now, the clutter of middle years has been hacked away, reunited with themselves, unhurriedly, with vision unimpaired. They are shuffling their way back to the streets of their birth, skirting carriageways, concourses, each neon-lit underpass. They are any age, and yet they have grown beyond age. They have become absences in their lives, demanding our care, yet, at the same time, oblivious to us. We confuse them, disconnected from the landscape in which they are young. We see shrunken figures and dressing gowns on zimmer frames, but they are children sent to do a message, an errand of trust. How can my father be ninety-two as he walks through Wexford town, knocking on neighbours those, stopping cloth-capped strangers, sent out to seek the loan of a good book for my grandfather to read, a novel with sufficient heft and depth and intelligence to distract, a compositor sick of back-proofing racks of letterpress newsprint who wants to lose himself on a journey to unfamiliar streets, a quiet man who will be led astray by old age into the county home where he waited for the books he sent his young son to seek years before. Gentle grandfather, Republican typesetter, drinker on Ram Street. Your vigil is over at the barred window of that Enniscorty asylum. Your son is coming with your treasured copy of the Observer that he dutifully collects from the Dublin train every Sunday morning. With a Canon Sheen novel, with H.G. Wells and Chesterton, with Charles Dickens, Edgar Allan Poe and Patrick McGill. He got distracted from his errand during decades in ships' cabins, grieving his wife's debt, becoming a connoisseur of loneliness. But now he emerges through the far side of such struggles. He has left his front door open, every light on deck aglow. He shuffles on a busted hip, clutching a vast armful of books, knowing only that somewhere between Finglas and Wexford, between the century of his birth and the one where he dies, he will encounter his own father, equally ancient, equally young. His father will be pleased with the books, the errand fulfilled. So, while we fret him adrift in such dangerous depths, unable to stir between tides of remembrance and despair, one part of him siphons free from the confused husk who phones moments after we leave his house to ask why nobody ever comes. The part that walks beyond our remit towards his dead father. Even if we could follow them, they would be too engrossed to care for the distractions of strangers like us who have not yet even been born. We will be intruding on a father and a son strolling back from town, 
to the Green Street Terrace that is the first and the last home they share.